about two stars We'll talk about code or whatever we'll talk about today It's about two stars, so please hang tight while I check that everything is okay Sound, check, camera, check, lights, check How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go So get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Hi, I'm Leandro Facchinetti, and let's write some code together, shall we? What we have on the menu today is to continue this effect that we are working on. We have been developing real-time audio effects for Reaper, in case you are new here. And we are developing this library that is going to give you components like this component that draws waveforms. Super cool stuff. And we are on our way to finish the first effect using the library, which is going to be a simple game plugin, but it's going to be super over-engineered. <laughs> so the first issue that I want to talk about today is drawing the volume over time. We already have something that draws the waveforms over time, and the waveform that we have going on here is just a white noise. So it's just a block, <laughs> doesn't look all that interesting. But I want to draw the changes to the slider over time. One of the things that we implemented is that you can automate this slider. And we even have a custom range here that allows you to assign this to a MIDI pedal or any kind of MIDI message. And I want to show this gain change over time. And the difficulty here is timing. I want the moment in time where you see the waveform changing, I want that to correspond to the moment in time where you see a little line going up and down. And that means that I cannot simply just store changes to the slider over time, I have to make sure that I am aligning to the storage of the waveform itself. And we are we have this component that tries to be clever, not tries to, succeeds in being clever. We have this component that is clever and it stores not all the samples, but just enough samples to draw the waveform relatively smoothly. So we are mapping from something like, I think that this is like five seconds. So it is um, 48,000 times five. I don't know what that number is, but it's it's a lot of samples that are being compressed into 5,000, I think, or eight, 10,000. I think it's 10,000 slices to draw this waveform. We are going from 48,000 times five, which is a big number, down to 10,000, which is a relatively smaller number. But in that conversion, we are compressing time. We are taking many, many samples that represent a, a, a period in time, and we are compressing that into a smaller space. And so we are introducing this notion of timing. And what I want is for the volume to be aligned with this. So we need to store, I think that my solution is going to be quick and dirty. It's just to store the position of the slider over time as well, which is kind of a waste of resources because the, most of the time the slider is just going to sit still. So I could maybe just try to store the moments where the slider is changing over time. But I think that simpler is probably better. And I'm going to store the position of the slider on every sample. And I'm going to do this conversion of 48,000 times five down to a smaller array of 10,000 for this as well. So we just need to kind of revisit the logic that draws the waveforms. And 
I wonder if I should do this on the volume plugin or if I should do this on the library. I think I want to do it on the library because I think I want to introduce this new component kind of thing. And we already have something for uh, drawing line graphs. Yeah, this guy, we implemented this in the stream like months ago. And this is super simple actually. But I don't think that this cuts it because we th this array needs to be smart in different ways for the kind of thing that we are doing, this whole decimation kind of thing that I'm talking about, the 40,000 times five being converted back down to a smaller array. So let's start a new component that is going to be similar to the waveforms but it's not going to be quite the same. So I think what I'm going to do is to duplicate the waveforms component and then start from there. So this is going to be some, I guess, it's going to be just a line for the lack of a better name. What do they call like line graphs? If I go to matplotlib, let's see what they call this type of plot that I'm talking about. They call it plot. So I might as well, right? Um, Kind of a generic name, I don't like it. Um, no, not that kind of graph. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with uh, lines. Then I'm going to replace every occurrence of waveform in this section with line. Or maybe with plot. Man, there is a lot of code in here. Okay, now is the time to make the decision. I am going to go with... I'm gonna go with line. So let's think about what the line graph needs in terms of data structure. I just need to store the Hmm, that's actually interesting. I, I, in the waveforms, I was storing the slices, which is the maximum and the minimum sample in that period of time. Well, a period is of time, isn't it? A period of time is a redundancy. Right, so I, I had these slices. But for the line graph, I need to do something else. What am I going to do? Am I going to get the maximum, the minimum, the average, the mean? I have several options of what I want to store, but in any case, it's going to be an array of these things, or actually a circular buffer of these things. So, I am not going to go with slice for sure. Um, I'm going to go with points. And, well, I guess I'm going to rename all occurrences of slices into points. A line is made of several points. That makes sense, right? Hmm. 
and then I'm going to rename slices into points just like that great so let me commit what I have I want to make sure that I didn't modify anything outside this range and it seems like it's all right so we still have that notion of duration like I, I will store points and the points are just the position of the slider of this slider. The points are just going to be the positions of this slider over time. And I want to have the notion of the duration. I'm storing this for like five seconds. Then samples per point still make sense and samples in current points still make sense. So this is how many samples are, uh, how many samples make up one point in the graph. And as I accumulate samples in the sample block, as samples come in, where am I? Should I go to the next point or should I accumulate this into the current point? So it's a very similar story to the waveforms that we implemented before. But the difference is that we don't need this whole data structure. And in fact, I think I'm going to change the implementation of the waveform to use sort of this and have two lines, one is, that is the maximum and one that is the minimum instead of doing the waveform as we are doing, but we'll see. So let's revisit this, make sure that everything is all right. We have the points, the duration, and we might just change this name, or maybe not. Yes, I will. I will change this. So Okay. I was just taking out one of the namespaces. So the line data structure has the uh, circular buffer of points, the duration that that line represents, the samples per point, and the samples in current point. Okay, it was just renaming variables, but that's all right. Then um, to create a new one of these data structures, I only need the size, so how many points I'm going to store, and the duration. So, oh, and but Fatis and Stuff is here. Hi, great to have you here. If you just joined us, we are in the middle of implementing our first plugin using the library, and it is going to be this just simple volume adjustment with lasers. <laughs> we are going to have a visualization here of the waveform, and we are going to have a slider that is going to have different ranges. So by default, it loads as a 10 dB kind of thing, but you can go to 30 dB and then down again. And even a custom version that allows you to set the boundaries of this so that you can assign this to a MIDI pedal. And we are also over-engineering the visualization of the original waveform, the generated waveform. And the reason why I'm over-engineering this so much is that I want to have a compressor that shows these kinds of things, like the gain reduction instead of just the volume slider. Right now it's just the volume slider. But I want to show the gain reduction. I want to show... Um, yeah, I want all my effects to to let you see what's going on. And I find that helpful. It's like in Ableton Live, that little compressor widget that shows the waveforms and everything. That's more or less what I want to do. But starting with a volume is easier to do all the visualization. In fact, I even have this idea of 
creating a, a visualizer that you drop before and after any compressor, and it will draw this kind of visualization for any compressor you have. We are just going to put like your compressor in the middle. So let's say that you want to have a visualiz visualization just like this for recomp. You put the effect before and after recomp, so something like this. And then we, in this one, we just store samples. In this one, we actually show things. And then we can um, plot all these beautiful graphs showing the gain reduction and everything for any kind of compressor, which I think is helpful for setting parameters and even for understanding what the compressor is doing. Um, oh, yeah. Um, and Fatis is saying that the new version of Reaper is the greatest uh, greatest Christmas gift ever because it has the rate brain resampler. That is true. And that actually prompted me into learning more about sample rate converters. We probably will need a sample rate converter in our library because we want to allow people to have uh, oversampling in their plugins. And oversampling is a kind of sample rate conversion but there are different needs for different purposes. Like in Reaper, uh, the sample rate converter needs to adapt in real time for things like uh, re-pitch uh, and also retune. I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, maybe for retune, it's just the algorithm that does the time stretching. But I know that for the longest time, rate brain was not in Reaper because at least that's what I found on the forums uh, post by Justin from like five to 10 years ago. They didn't bring in the rate brain algorithm because they needed to adapt the rate in real time. So that's a need that some plugins will have, like delays may have some needs like that if you want to be able to automate the length of the delay. And there are other plugins that need to be real time, zero latency. So instead of doing a sample rate conversion that is zero or linear phase, you need it to be minimal phase. So there are all these interesting conversations to be had about sample rate conversion. And I all that, I started investigating that more because of the uh, rate brain sample rate converter that comes with Reaper in the newest version. So. That's all fun stuff that will come later in this series of streams. But let's get back to the line drawing for the gain reduction, not the gain reduction, but the, the value of this slider. So let's see what I need here. I need to create a data structure. And then I need the the points, I need to store the points. That is going to be the circular, uh, a circular buffer of this size. That makes sense. And then the signal. Oh, okay. I get a hold of the signal and the size and blah, 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 because I need to reset stuff in the circular buffer. But I don't think I need to reset anything for the line drawing. Could be nice to have an initial value sort of thing, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll not initialize this. I'll just rely on the fact that a circular buffer is initialized with a zero, with, with a bunch of zeros actually. So that is all right. Then this makes sense but I don't really need a local variable for that. Then the duration, the samples per point, is just the duration divided by the number of points in the circular buffer. And then I start with that. All of this makes sense, and then I can eliminate some local variables. Okay. Then to push a sample into the line, 
Well, maybe it's not really a sample. It is... Hmm... I think I'm gonna call it a sample for now, but it's not really a sample. Well, I guess I am sampling the slider, but it's not really, really a sample. An audio sample, anyway. So maybe I should rename this later. Oh, and Fati is, is asking, did you get my message about infin infinite wave or did YouTube chat destroy it? YouTube chat destroyed it, but I do know about what you're talking. Uh, uh, it's this um, this website probably, and it's a comparison between sample rate converters, so we can use um, something that is relatively good, like Reaper Six Extreme High Quality. Compare that to a rate brain and I think that the version that exists in Reaper is probably this one but I don't know I also found some posts from uh, the person behind Voxango I forget his name but that that's the person who developed this algorithm the R, the rate brain algorithm and they mentioned that this website was outdated but it was a post from like 10 years ago, so I don't know. I think that maybe it's the R uh, rate brain free. That's that's probably the one that is in Reaper because that's what they call it in Reaper. They call it rate eight brain. And if we, uh, then we can see comparison. So this is a sine sweep, so it goes like. And we are looking for two things in this. The first is for any kind of harmonics that would add lines here, and that's bad. And we are also looking for aliasing, which is a line just like this. And maybe this stream is not going to show this because it's super, super quiet, but there is a kind of a blue line here on the Reaper high quality, and but there is no blue line over here. It's just pure black. So this is some um, aliasing that was happening. Uh, yeah, I whistled a sign sweep. So this is aliasing that is happening above the Nyquist frequency for this. And this is bad, but this is also super, super quiet. We are talking about like probably minus 170 dB. You will not hear that. Um, so let's look at some of the other tests. This is, again, for harmonics that shouldn't be there. So ideally, we wouldn't see anything here. We would see, well, I guess we would just see this stone because it's like one kilohertz stone. But be because of physics, when you are doing sample rate conversion, you introduce this very inaudible noise. But uh, again, rate brain is better because here we are talking about peaks at 170 and here nothing gets near 170 and on the this test we see the attenuation on the pass band and, and we don't see any not the attenuation the ripple on the pass band and we don't see any ripple and we don't see any attenuation so in both cases it's not attenuating it's not bringing down the volume before 20k so both of them are good And then this is, um, again, the transition. So at 20K, do we have any ripple? No. And on this one, we actually have some attenuation before 20K, which is not ideal, but... And it's even kind of a, a 6 dB, so it's, it's not perfect. So I think that in this one, this is winning. Then the phase response of both are just going to be flat, flat lines because they're linear. And then the impulse response is just looking for ripples, right? Oh, so this is interesting. This one goes below. All the ones I know go above. 
But this is the kind of ripple that you expect on the time domain. So the more ripple, the worse, actually. But it's necessary to make the phase response linear. It's necessary to have some ringing and even some pre-ringing, which is even worse. We can compare that to something that is really, really bad. In the box for this, in the frequently asked questions, they give Vega 7 as an example of something that is really bad. So here we can see lots of harmonics and we see very strong aliasing. And in this one, the distortion is getting up to like 110, which is again, super, super quiet, but still it's way more than our eight brain. And this has no ripple, so that's good. And this isn't good. <laughs> This uh, this white line is the Nyquist frequency, so anything above is aliasing. Oh, and this is minimum phase. See, no pre-ringing. So I think that's the website that you wanted to talk about, and I give you a preview of what we are going to discuss later when we get to implement some of these uh, sample rate converters. Uh, yeah, the blue line is visible. Infinite Wave needs to update their website with Reaper's current R8 brain. Well, I guess it's just the same as the R8 brain entry, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it doesn't matter. The bad resamplers look very psychedelic. Yeah, uh, we can draw some pretty cool figures with the spectrogram of some bad <laughs> sample rate converters. Okay, but let's get back to business. We are doing this line drawing. The best free resampler is uh, Sox. Yeah, that one is also good. We can look at it real quick. I'm getting sidetracked, but that's all right. That's why I, I stream to get sidetracked, it's fun. And it is in here, if I remember correctly, yeah. And the cool thing is that they have different versions even. So you can have a linear phase. Most sample rate converters are linear phase, flat line, but you can also have minimal phase and that is useful if you want to minimize the ringing, but also if you want to do things in real time which we do want. And I guess this is very high quality. There is an intermediate phase, what's that about? Ah, okay, it's, I guess, in between. So you have a better, you can have a better trade-off in terms of the, the ringing. Then it rings again, pre-ringing. Yeah, I heard I heard good things about this sample rate converter and it is open source, so I don't know what's the story there, why the Reaper people decided to go with R8 Brain, or maybe why they don't have R8 Brain and Socks as well. They could have both. Maybe it's because of the thing I mentioned before that they have to be able to change the rate as the sample rate converter is working because of features like this right you can change the playback in using this algorithm but then if you have some sort of stretch marker with a slope then you want to be able to change the rate in real time oh and Bo is here hey Bo great to have you um yeah okay so you didn't know about the linear versus minimal phase. Yeah, it's not only, okay, so we can dive a little bit deeper into this. So I guess it's, it became a sample rate converter shallow dive, but we'll do that. So the thing is, there is a trade-off of phase responses. And you may be thinking, well, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? So the phase, 
is going to alter the quality. First of all, why do we even have to have this conversation? Well, it is because a sample rate converter consists of basically two operations. First, you need to filter out the frequencies above the Nyquist of the target. So if you're, com if you're converting from 96 to 44.1, the Nyquist frequency of the target is 22.05, 20, uh, right? That's the maximum frequency you'll be able to represent when you get down to 44.1, half of the sampling rate, 44.1. That's 22.05. So we will not be able to represent frequencies above 22K when we get to 44. But we are able to represent those frequencies at 96. So to not have those beautiful looking but terrible sounding graphs like the Vegas one. So to not have this kind of response, we want to filter things out. We want to filter these frequencies out. So it becomes a problem of an EQ. It's a filter, right? And we want to do the filtering in the 96K version, and then we throw away some of the samples to get down to 44.1. We don't really throw away, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, but in principle that's what we are doing. We filter out the frequencies that will not be representable, and then we throw away some of the samples to get down to this sample range. And then it becomes a problem of filtering, of EQing, and then we get to this this trade-off between linear phase and minimum phase. And the trade-off usually goes like this. For minimum phase, you can do it in real time. It's generally faster to implement as well. I mean, not it's easier to implement, but it also it is faster to run these kinds of filters. So you can run them faster and you can then run you don't need any latency to run them all good stuff right but this affects the phase of the response and it can interact in bad ways with other things and especially when you're doing sample rate conversion you want to be as transparent as, as possible so you don't want to mess with the phase of the signal in many cases there are a few cases where you would do sample rate conversion with a minimum phase filter. For instance, if you are doing a guitar effect that needs to distort, so the distortion is going to create harmonics, the harmonics could be over the Nyquist frequency, they would fold back and, and uh, that would be bad. So what you do is you oversample, then you do the distortion, and then you do sample rate, say, sample rate conversion to downsample back. So if you do it with a minimal phase filter, you can do it in real time with no latency and the guitar player can hear everything with minimal latency. And that's good. And messing with the phase of that guitar signal is no big deal in most cases. But there are cases, and I guess when you're like in Reaper and you're rendering and you're bouncing a project, you probably want the, the filter to be linear phase. So for this one, we do need latency, which is not a big deal if you're bouncing a project. And it is relatively more complicated to design and to implement, but not by a huge amount. And it is not going to mess with the face. So it's not going to mess with the sound. It's not going to like comb filter with other signals or anything like that. Um, but it does have another problem with it, which is pre-ringing. So if you want your filter to be super steep, like this one, this is not steep at all, but this is very steep. So the steeper you want the filter to be, the more it will ring. And because you need more, uh, well, this is, the, the impulse response needs to be longer or the filter kernel, needs to be bigger. And that is going to generate this pre-ringing here that you see. So before the sample even comes in, you start to hear the ripple effects of that. And that is necessary. If you want your filter to be um, zero phase or linear phase, 
you must have an impulse response that is symmetric. So this ringing needs to, this pre-ringing needs to occur. And the more you want to filter out the frequencies, the more pre-ringing you get. And if it is really long, you can start to hear that. It's going to smear the transient. So if you have a very sharp attack on something, it is not going to be as sharp when you do this. But most of this effect is going to happen on the uh, on the frequencies at the transition. So we are talking about frequencies that we probably won't even hear because we are talking about frequencies above 20K. So it's not a huge deal, but it's something to be aware of. So I guess that's a relatively shallow dive into why we need these filters to begin with and the trade-offs between minimum phase and linear phase. I hope you find that enlightening. So let's see what you all are talking about. Um, oh, uh, yeah, it could be nice to have socks in Reaper. And in some ways, it is necessary to have socks in Reaper if you want it to be the sample rate converter for something like Retune. But if you are only interested in rendering and then downsampling, like in the render menu, if you're interested in using rate brain or socks, you can always just not resample in Reaper if your project is 48, just rendering 48 and then call socks on the command line. We could probably write a script to help do that, but I don't think it's worth it, but whatever. Uh, oh, sorry to hear that. Huh. All right. So I don't think we'll be able to finish the line graph, but we did have a nice conversation about the sample rate converters. And the thing to know about this website is that some people is even pissed off by this website because it kind of fuels the conversation of my DAW is better than yours because of the sample rate converter or things just sound nicer in a certain DAW, and it doesn't really matter all that much. I mean, there are some things that are very bad. If you go way back in time, then this is no good, right? But this is very old. If we are talking about modern software, then this is even using socks. So even the bad ones, even the modern software that are not necessarily doing a great job like this, and I think that this is probably the latest version. At least it's the latest that they have here. That is the latest version of Bitwig. Well, it's not the latest. It's old, but never mind. Even the bad ones are still relatively okay. I mean, we are talking about, what is this, minus 90 dB. You are unlikely to hear that maybe. I mean, this is super bad actually, because it's just a single frequency and it's putting a lot of distortion. So if you think about inter, um, intermodulation and everything, this could be something that you hear. Maybe not. My point being, most software is fine. Even if they look weird here, it's probably not something you, that you would be able to tell. And I suppose that because of this, the biggest advantage of adding rate brain to Reaper is that it is fast, right? If you wanted good quality, you would need to wait because it's very slow. But this is good and it's fast. And that's, I guess, the important part. All right, so let's move forward with this. Um, we, starting, we are starting samples, the duration, the samples per point, though I don't think I should call those samples, and then the samples in current point. And then what happens when we push a sample into the line? Well, uh, Fati says, yeah, but my DAW is better than yours. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, hmm. 
Oké. Okay. Um, right, so what happens when you're pushing a sample into the line graph? We need to get a hold of the circular buffer and we need to get a hold of the other parts of the data structure, the samples per point and the samples in current point. And then this, what is this? Well, this is us getting one point. This is... Huh. I wonder why I'm doing it this way. Because I could just look at the index, right? Yeah. But whatever, this is working. So now we need to update this point. So I guess this is the time where I decide if I will take the minimum, the maximum, the average. Um, I think I am going to take the average. So it's sample divided by the samples per point. And this way I get an average of all the samples. Uh, I'm going to leave myself a to do here. Other kinds of average or ever other kinds of accumulation minimum maximum mean and so forth though to do a mean i would need to store all the things and to do minimum maximum and averaging i don't need that so another one that could be cool is just take the last one last sample I mean just get rid of all the other samples in the middle it's essentially decimation so yeah we can think about that so yeah we can extract this notion of circular counting and then All of that seems cool. Um, I don't need to update the maximum and the minimum. Oh, I do need to update it back to zero. But I need to revisit these things because before I was doing things like this, so I was storing the the value in memory already, and now I'm not storing the value in memory, so I guess what I need to do is at the end I need to do something like this. Oh, no, I can do that. Oh, and I need this here as well. Yeah, I think that this stands a chance of working, but before we test, let me catch up. Um, Nero is here. Hello. 
Are you interested in embedded audio, like creating everything from scratch with an SBC? SBC, Session Border Controller. I don't think that that's the one that you are talking about. Oh, it is. Hmm. I don't know. I have no experience with that. I have no idea what an SBC even is. And embedded audio is not something that I'm looking into right now. I am more interested in creating real-time audio effects and learning about the basics of digital signal processing, like learning about the basics of the discrete Fourier transform, filters, that sort of thing. But embedded is always fun. So maybe, maybe someday. Yeah. It's not something that I'm necessarily looking into right now, but some of the techniques transfer, like many of the things that we have to do to do real-time processing in audio plugins, well, we have to think about performance, we have to make sure that we minimize latency, all that kind of stuff, and that transfers to embedded, but the language would be different. It probably would see B, C, C++ and assembly, and right now we are using JS effects, so it's similar, not quite the same, but I may look into that in the future. Yeah, I barely use Instagram. I don't even have Instagram. <laughs> I look a little bit like this person. He has more hair. <laughs> okay, so let's review this storing of what we are doing here. I am not happy with the fact that I'm using this get at all times, but it works now, I think. Okay, yeah, I, I, I reread this and I think it makes sense. So I think that this has a chance of working. Let's go to the drawing part of this. So I have a line and all of that makes sense. I'll probably not need the minimum the maximum, but I can visit that later. So let's see, I get a hold of the points, I get a hold of the signal size. And then I calculate half of the height. Uh, these are numbers, the, the waveforms are number between, numbers between minus one and one. But the line is going to be numbers between... Mm, I'll let them be numbers... Hang on, they are... This is in dB. I probably want to plot this in dB. So these are numbers between minus 10 and 10 or minus 100 and 100. So some of the assumptions don't hold. I need to probably have a range here. And probably I want to have an explicit range for the waveform as well, because what if I have needs? <laughs> what if I want to draw the waveform in a different way, right? If I have a waveform that is not really a waveform or something. Yeah, in fact, I think that I'm going to change the way that the waveform works. It's going to be two of these lines, one for the maximum, one for the minimum, and I'm going to have a way of drawing the region between the lines. I'm going to generalize the waveform, in other words. And uh, Nero asks if EL is higher performance than C. No, it's not. It is fast. It is the fastest that I have seen in, but I have not done a lot of research on this. But there are languages that are compiled to real-time audio processors like Faust, and there is even something that I forget the name, but you can write real-time audio effects in Lua. 
I forget the name of the thing. Lua is not going to be as fast as EEL2. I haven't measured, but my intuition tells me that. And EL is fast, but it's not as fast as C. Many people have developed plugins in C++ or in C, and they prototype in EL2. But then they go ahead and implement everything in C++ because it's going to be faster. But EL2 is good enough. It is fast for the most part. I mean, people have done crazy stuff with EL2, so. And it's getting even better. It's gonna be open sourced soon. So yeah, it's getting better all the time. Okay, so we get a hold of the points, we get a hold of, uh, of the size of the signal. Oh, we probably want some notion of offset. And I think I only want that in the y-axis. And then the y-offset can be something like half. Okay, and what is the width of a point? Well, a point is supposed to not have any width, but in this case it does have, so <laughs> it's the width of the whole drawing divided by the number of points in the signal. Then this is not really the midpoint anymore. This is now mm, It's not really the... Um, I want to say that... How am I even using this? Hmm, okay, it's not mid really the midpoint. It is the starting point. I don't like this name, but whatever. It's just not in the middle anymore. It's in the offset, so. Yeah, I guess it is what it is. Uh, thank you for giving us all this educational material. Thank you for watching. You are great. I'm relearning maths and physics to build the background and intuition required to tackle DSP. It is a lot of fun. It is also a lot of work. There is a lot to be learned. It's a huge field. It's sometimes deeply mathematical. But yeah, as a beginner, I'm finding it a lot of fun, having a lot of fun learning all these things. And it goes very deep. If you want to do cool stuff, it goes very deep. But if you want to have some quick results, you can do useful things with very little code, which is fun. All right, so all of this makes sense, then this is the points offset. Hey there. Okay, yeah, this makes sense. This is the point, and then I don't have the minimum and the maximum. And then the Y position is the Y starting point minus, I guess, the point times the Y offset. And the height, I don't really need to compute this height because I'm drawing a line, so. Okay. 
I'll just draw a little square. And I leave myself a to do here. Don't hard code this value. Either have it as a parameter or use the design system at the very least, right? Instead of having this multiplying by two sort of situation here. Okay, so then we have the line X and Y and we still have to work out the minimum and the maximum. But I will not do it right now. I'll just get rid of these two and I will put this to work and we'll see if there is any line on this screen. So I'll leave myself another to do here. Work in the minimum and the maximum. All right, so how do we use this? Similar to the waveforms. So let me just copy and paste all of this. And this is not waveforms inputs, it is gains or maybe volumes. Yeah, all right. And I can get rid of these. And this is going to be a line. I will also leave a to do on the waveform or even here. Have some pre selected points size. For instance, the 8K stuff we did yesterday. <laughs> This comment, as all good comments, is going to be wrong in a couple hours. So we don't need one volume per channel. Yes, I'll call it this the volume line. And then in the sample block, we need to push into this. So let's look at the push function. And we are pushing into this data structure. And what we are pushing is the, I guess this, right? This is the actual value. It's not the value from the slider. It's the value that we are actually using to uh, attenuate or increase the gain of the input. So there is this whole follower thing that we have to implement to make sure that if you automate this parameter, if you change this parameter really fast, there is no clipping, not in terms of clipping the signal, but in terms of clicking. That's what I mean. And then over in the GFX block, after drawing the waveforms, I can draw this. So the line is going to be this. The color is going to be a bright red. The minimum is... So this value that I'm pushing into here is some gain. It is 
Um, well, I haven't really worked out the minimum and the maximum, so it doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to draw this from zero to Oh, this is in the wrong place. Should be here, I suppose. Hmm. No, I think I uh, the question is, do I want to draw one of these lines per channel in the output? Or just one big line? I think I'll just, just, just draw one big line. So I'll go from the top to the bottom and my offset is going to be half. So with this, I expect to see some red line on the screen. <laughs> and Reaper crashed. I don't know what's up with this. I think it has to do with this update. But there is something that you do if you do it wrong. <laughs> Reaper crashes, and it is an unusual. Reaper usually doesn't crash with JSFX. You can divide by zero, you can take the logarithm of negative numbers, it doesn't matter. It just keeps going and gives you some BS results. But in this case, it's crashing. So go figure. Tomorrow, we are going to figure. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this. Thanks for being around and for supporting me on PayPal, Patreon, subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. Tomorrow, we are going to figure this out. We are going to be back here at 6.30 UTC to find out why Reaper is crashing and to try to get this line on the screen. See you tomorrow. Bye.